Hi, I'm Mrs. Curry, your Viking Librarian from Everett High School, and I'm here today to continue helping you with your research project. In an earlier lesson, we talked about the databases, why it's a good place to start, and why the information there is reputable. But what happens if you can't find everything you need in the databases, and you need to go to Google? How do you really apply the CRAAP test and work through which resources you should use and which you shouldn't? What do we do if we have gone to the database and we've only found two or three articles that are helpful for us and we need much more information? Uh, your first inclination is to get on Google and just start putting in a bunch of words. But remember, with the CRAAP test, a lot of the stuff that we find on Google is not going to be appropriate for our research paper. And so I'm going to show you some examples of how to think through what to use and what not to use. Um, and this is my thought process. So um, our research question has to do with comparing healthcare in Canada and healthcare in the United States. So I'm going to put in as my search terms, healthcare Canada. We're gonna find out what happens. Notice that the first thing that comes up is Wikipedia. Now you'll hear a lot of people say, never, never, never use Wikipedia. I'm going to give you um, a little bit of different advice. Yes, use Wikipedia, but don't cite it as a source. It is a tool we can use, but it would never be a source I quote in an academic research paper. And let me show you what I mean. Here is Wikipedia, and it's often the first thing that comes up in a Google search. The reason we don't use Wikipedia is because there's not really an established way of verifying all of the information. Uh, like there would be in a database or a regular encyclopedia online. But there is um, a use for Wikipedia. We can go through here and read this article. It's very short. Um, it's not too difficult to read. And we can get some very valuable background information to maybe build our list of keywords for searching or um, just help us even formulate research questions if we don't know enough about a subject to formulate a good question. But the other thing I want to point out in Wikipedia is if you go to the very end of the article, this is actually quite a long article. If we go all the way down to the end of the article, you will find at the end of almost every Wikipedia article that there are references. This is where the person who wrote the Wikipedia article actually found their information and summarized their information. And you notice back in the article, they have cited their sources. You'll see that here tells you what source it is from. So if you find some information, you can either click on the number here, or you can look through the articles here. And these articles most likely are going to be helpful and actually quotable. They're going to be some reputable sources. So um, I could click on Commonwealth Fund Survey for 2016. Now, this is the Canadian Institute for Health and Information. This is actually going to be a credible site. And we can now use this information and read from this site for our research paper and to answer our research question because this is a credible site, not just Wikipedia, but Wikipedia is a step to finding more credible information. That's one way to use Google. So I want to go um, up here in the search bar and I want to show you, if I change my search terms and I say healthcare and I say crisis, I'm gonna get some very different types of hits in Google. Now you see we have up here 438 million hits. There's no way to go through all of those, but I can skim through and see if there's anything um, in the first few pages that looks like a credible information source. So I want to tell you right now, I already know this just because of my prior knowledge. I can say ama.org. I know this is going to be a credible source because I know that the American Medical Association is abbreviated AMA. Just because it says org does not mean that it is reputable. You need to know what organization it is. 
Um, so you can scroll through and maybe do some, just by looking at the URLs, find some credible information. Here's Forbes Magazine, Forbes.com. I would know that Forbes is a credible site. Um, Forbes Magazine is well known in business circles. Here's PBS.org, the healthcare crisis. Well, I know that PBS.org would be a reputable site. The New Yorker.com. I do know that the New Yorker has a political leaning, but they don't report false news. So I would know that I could go to the New Yorker and read this article. I could get some information that would be useful for my research topic, but I would also want to know what their political leaning is. So I go into it with my eyes open, knowing that they have a bias. These are things that you're going to do using that crap method and actually putting it into practice. And then I can look here. This is in 2020. This is very current. So I know it meets the current criteria. I know it's the New Yorker, so they're not going to have just any crazy writing an article. So most likely this person has some authority to write. And so I can kind of think through when I go to the databases, I don't have to think about the crap test. But if I do need more information, I need to start putting those into practice, just like I'm thinking through it now. The other source I want to show you is Google Scholar. So it is Scholar. Oops, let's try that again. Scholar.google.com. Now, Google Scholar is something that a lot of teachers ask you to use. Um, because they're not familiar with the databases. Um, Google Scholar is actually pretty good. It does have some drawbacks, but I want to show you what it looks like. Healthcare crisis. Now, we can um, look through these articles. These are all going to be scholarly articles that would be reputable sources. So that takes care of one part of the crap test. You will notice that over here on the right hand side, we can also sort by date. So that's going to take care of the currency part of the crap test. But we can't decide whether it is an appropriate source or not level wise. When it's a scholarly source, it is not thinking about you being in high school. This could be a college level reading. This could be a graduate level reading or even a doctoral level reading. And so you would have to skim through and see if you can understand the article, whereas the databases um, automatically sift that through if you're using Explora High School or you change that reading level over in the limiters. Google Scholar will not do that for you. So there are some um, things that are great about Google Scholar, but know that it is going to be a little more difficult to sift through. And a lot of these articles will already be found in the databases and the ones that are too difficult for us to read would already be um, sifted through and taken out of your search terms. But if you are looking for some other resources, this is a great place to go. So thinking through that crap test, when we're looking on Google, um, if I were to go back to regular Google, and I were to type in healthcare, now we have healthcare.gov. .gov, remember that's a government website, and this would probably be a fairly accurate article. Remember that some .gov sites do have political leanings, but I would trust this site. Now, would I go to Fox News? Um, with reservations, because we know that it is not unbiased. So um, we could find some information there, but know that they have a political leaning. And then we would sift through thinking about this in each in instance. Who is this? What are they saying? Why are they saying it? One of the best things to look for, if we do modernhealthcare.com, what is modern healthcare? We could go through and find out who this person is or this organization is by scrolling down to the bottom and there's going to be an about us. Sometimes this is hidden. If you find the about us, you can click on that and it would quickly help you figure out who this organization is and if it's someone you want to trust or not. Sometimes when you read the about, 
they give themselves away. Um, and you know that they have political reasons or maybe um, financial reasons. They're um, big pharma and they are trying to sell you um, their medications and they're making money off it. So those kind of tips about who wrote this, how do I know who wrote this? Look at the about, look at the author, Google the author's name, find out who they are. Even a Wikipedia article about that author may tell you whether you want to trust that article or not. And then remember, when in doubt, ask your teacher or your librarian. We are here to help you evaluate these sources and think through the process as you're learning how to evaluate on your own. So remember, you can always contact me at joy.curry at lansingschools.net, the.viking.librarian at gmail.com, or you can call me during the school day at 755-4452, uh, and I would ha be happy to take your call and walk you through evaluating your resources. So when in doubt, be skeptical, look it up, and if you can't find it in the databases and have to go to Google or Google Scholar, be aware of the limitations.